To throt or not to throt? That is the question, which we will be answering today in this Why You Suck With Catherine special edition. When I released my Why You Suck With Catherine video, I had quite a few comments disagreeing with my early game decision of attacking Azag first. Some people were not impressed and thought that it wasn't the correct call. They said I should have attacked Throt first and there were quite a few folks agreeing with this. Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen my Why You Suck With Catherine video, then I strongly recommend you watch that first, then come back to this one. There's a link to that video in the top right of your screen right now. Watch the video and have a look at the comment section where you'll find low public order surrounding my decision not to deal with Throt first. So I thought I would indulge these comments and turn back the clock to turn three of my campaign. And instead of ambushing Azag as stated in Reason 2, I would proceed directly north to the Hell Pit to destroy Clan Mulder. This is the exact same campaign, there have been no alterations to the plan that was laid out in Reason 1 of the Why You Suck With Katarine video. Again, I will be referring to that video quite a bit, so please do go and watch it if you haven't. But then again, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your mum. My name is Blake and I bid you my fondest welcome to Blake's Takes, where today I will be giving you my take on thwarting Throt before Azag in the Kislev Ice Court campaign in Immortal Empires. Is my take hot or not? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Now, let's rewrite some history together. Chapter 1 an addendum to why you suck with Katarin. In the original video, there was a part that I missed out, a part which is actually very important in my consideration of taking out Azag first. No, no. It's the strategic importance of the Silver Pinnacle. Firstly, I immediately declared war on the Lamian Sisterhood here to relieve them of this territory as soon as I had killed Azag. It served as my eastern frontier town. It is a major settlement and has a diamond mine within it. Plus, the narrow corridor it is situated in is very easy to defend, and as I was on good terms with Karak Kadrin after smashing Azag, they were a dependable ally who looked after the south. So, the Silver Pinnacle can easily be defended and is very wealthy. So if we attack Azag first, we get a gold mine and the opportunity for a diamond mine shortly thereafter. That's just another consideration which you should make. The Chaos Dwarves do declare war on you, but I find they mainly attacked me with Hobgoblin stacks, which weren't too much of a threat when I stationed a small garrison in there to secure the border. They never used their underway ability to circumvent the fortress. It was a Helm's Deep of sorts and did not fall to the Chaos Dwarf aggression. Now with that addendum, let's move on to the Time Fork and see how we do by wiping out the Hell Pit before taking care of Azag. Chapter 2 The Arduous March to the Hell Pit So again, we start at turn 3, we've wiped out our Norsken enemy. I'm going to continue north to thwart Throt. My plan is to make a mad dash to the Hell Pit to cut off his recruitment centre early. Because of the Skaven's natural proclivity to the Stork stance, we won't be able to see where Throt is, but we do know where his capital is. That isn't moving or hiding so it is the only sensible option for an aggressive manoeuvre. This feels like a lot of turns of not doing anything. We can't recruit many more units due to lack of income, our provinces are still pretty weak. We do pick up some more Kossars on the way to help us out though, but we're really tight on money. Now I could disband Alexander and merge his forces to Catherine's to save some money, but I chose to keep the Second Lord. This was probably not wise considering how poor we are. At turn 8, we have reached the Hell Pit. There is a massive force in there ready for us to fight. I'm pretty sure we do have enough Kossars, but we're probably going to take some casualties. Now, I want to fight this little Skaven Lord here, so then all the garrison comes out as reinforcements. So we've got kind of lucky here. We haven't had to attack and besiege the walls. Let's jump into the battle and see what happens. We cannot fault Kislev, fight with pride, my Make people! One step backwards, comrade. Yep, 
As expected, that battle was pretty painful, but we've scraped through. Only one Kossar was wiped out. It's just an awful lot of rats to be dealing with, with an early game Kossar army. I finish up the rest of the Skaven which are infesting the place. I go ahead and lose the War Cat, but to be honest they're expensive and a bit useless so that's not a big deal. And we've finally captured the Hell Pit. The Hell Pit as a prize is unsuitable terrain, so I suggest sacking it and then occupying it, to extract some fast value from it. Throt has reared his ugly head and wants to fight. We keep our forces in convoy, as I mentioned in Reason 6 of the Why You Suck with Katarin video, to ensure that we don't get overwhelmed if there is a fight or another Skaven stack lurking around in Stork stance. Remember that sheer numbers is all Throt has in the early turns of a campaign, so just keep your forces together and you will remove that advantage. Chapter 3 The Time Comparison Now we're at turn 10, we've taken the Hell Pit and a fair few casualties. Our economy is ropey at best, but we've cut off Clan Mulder's supply of fresh recruits. Clan Mulder still lives, Luckily, Throck decides to suicide himself into my convoy, but we've still got to go and clear out the other territories to finally expunge his presence from the northern oblasts. Finally, by turn 12, Throck has been wiped out, but I didn't know this. By looking back at the footage, I can see that I'm no longer at war with anyone on this particular diplomacy screen with Gustaltin. I wish you got unskippable big pop-ups with certain events, like when an enemy is destroyed as an example. I didn't realise I'd already killed Throt, so I kept going north to the lair of the Troll King, suspecting there would be Skaven remnants there. Now both Zazel and Throg declare war on me, so now I know I'll be stuck up in the north for a while defending the newly captured territory. I do, however, execute a beautiful and very lucky ambush on Throg, which I'm very pleased with. So how are we faring on the opposite timeline? By turn 10, we are just a couple of turns away from building our gold mine. Azag is fully wiped out, and we're about to descend upon the Silver Pinnacle for their highly coveted diamond mine. We've also managed to take out one of Cathay's trade caravans. You can see that I'm at war with the rebel lords here, and I have a large cash reserve. Now you won't find these trade caravans whilst you're fighting around the Hell Pit. Not even those wild Cathayans will try to trade with Throt. So this is a massive early game finance boost that is lost to you if you don't fight Azag first. While at the Silver Pinnacle, I didn't just find one trade caravan, I found three. It's a veritable cornucopia of caravans. My coffers were crowded with confiscated Cathayan coin. Now back to the other campaign, to my surprise, Azag has not declared war on me. In fact, he appears to be in a bit of a pickle. He's fighting Dryka, Ungrim Iron Fist and the Lamian Sisterhood. So in fairness to the comment section, he really isn't as much of a threat as I thought him to be. And with Throt destroyed and me being dragged into a war with Azazel and Throg, there is now potentially hope that Castelton might live. Chapter 4 The Conclusion Now ladies and gentlemen, oh who am I kidding, my audience is over 97% men. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. What is my opinion? Now that I've tried both strategies, which one do I feel is the better pick and why? Well, it may come as no surprise that I much prefer the Azag method. Yes, Azag did not attack me. He did not call for the mighty war that I feared he would in the early game, and Castaltin may yet live to be confederated another day. But Castaltin is a pretty average legendary lord. He's not bad, but I actually quite like that he was destroyed, because that meant I could take Erengrad very early, which is one of the wealthiest settlements in the game. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> you lose out on so much early game wealth if you don't attack Azag. I really don't think the benefit of potentially confederating Castaltin much later in the game and Azag not declaring war on you in the early game 
is worth the opportunity cost of not striking him early and taking his lands and the inevitable caravans that will pass through them. You get a diamond mine, a gold mine, loads of trade caravans to pillage and secure borders. By killing Azag, you will also get serious diplomatic bonuses with Karek Kadrin, who will become a staunch ally of yours. Also, turning around and marching to the Hell Pit felt unnatural after the three-turn blitz of my starting opponent. It felt like leaving a question unanswered. I could be securing some extremely wealthy territories to my east, but instead I'm traipsing up north to fight a fat rat with a cane. By the time you've finished securing the east, you'll have grown your cities to level 3, if you followed the growth strategy I laid out in Reason 3 of why you suck with Katarin. This gives you access to war sleds, which will pulverise Skaven infantry blobs. You can finally lay down your Kossars and bask in the level 3 settlement glory. Now that brings me to another point of contention. Some folks did not like the way I spoke about their beloved Kossars. One fine commenter even accused me of slander, and to them I say, perhaps I treated you too harshly. The Kossars are tier 0 units, and they do have some utility with their ranged attacks on the battlefield, and I suppose for the ease of recruitment, it was perhaps unfair to say they were terrible units but I saw some commenters saying that they take Kossars into the late game, which I just think is absurd. I saw a Kossar unit getting beaten by clan rats, so I still disagree with that. You want to get Streltsy, really. They're armoured and they have armour-piercing damage. You'll be going up against a lot of high-armour enemy units in Chaos and Norska, so it's good to get prepared for that. The Skaven, in fairness, aren't well armoured, so you can use your Kossars for them, but then I'd advise swapping over to Streltsy and phasing out Kossars. So, in conclusion, I still think smashing Azag is the correct way to go, but I loved the debate that unfurled in the comment section, and this video was great fun to make. If you'd like to see more deep dives into other strategies which are bellicosely and pugnaciously hurled at me from the comment section, let me know. And as always, if you've enjoyed today's video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. I've been Blake, delivering my take. Thank you all so much for watching.